So the mastery difference, as I call it, okay, if you guys want to get to the likes of the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, 60, thousand pounds plus, while you're not doing anything, these are some core foundational um, actions that you need to take, okay? I'm going to go a little bit deeper into this now because um, I want to give you guys some actionable takeaways. So in terms of business documentation, you are not your business, okay? Imagine you as and your business completely a separate entity because ultimately you aren't your business. For your business to thrive, for your business to continue without you, you need to give it an identity. And that's where the, um, the business objective comes in. Like, what is the objective? A lot of people don't do this. A lot of people don't even take this step. They don't have what the objective really is. Then you have some operating principles. These principles are the rules of your business. These principles are the rules that ensure that the objective is protected. A lot of people don't do this. And the reason f and, and what happens if you don't go through this process is you can start to lose control of your operations. This building that you're building, if you're, if you're scaling um, more and more and more, what will happen is if you don't put rules in place and you just bring people in, people will start to modify your system. People will start to evolve the system. People will start to think they know what they're doing. People will start to think that they're, they're that they can be creative and you've got to stay in control. And that's why we have working procedures. That's why we manage procedures and not people. We manage procedures and not people. Because if we manage a procedure, that procedure can then manage multiple people at once. Okay, instead of you going in and speaking to one person at a time and saying, we do this, we do that, we create one procedure that can do, that can help or keep people doing the same outcome over and over and over again. The greatest example of this is major franch franchises such as McDonald's, Starbucks, Costa Coffee. You know, how they, how they make a, a cheeseburger at, at, at McDonald's is exactly the same every single time. How they make a, a coffee at Starbucks is exactly the same every single time. It has to be exactly the same because it's about protecting the foundation. Let me know if you, if you agree, guys. Let me, let me know in the, in the chat if, if, if that makes sense to you. Because then ultimately it's you start talking about the operations management. And this will apply when you start to take action in your business in finding products and, and sourcing products and shipping products, because all this will start to come together because then we have roles and responsibilities. Yeah. Roles and responsibilities. You've got different people doing different tasks and those people that are in your business, they need to know what tasks they're doing. They need to know what role and responsibility that they have. The key performance indicators are numbers in, and we definitely go deeply into this in, in my operations. These are numbers that are fed back every single day. How much are we sourced? How many winners have we had? Um, what is the, uh, how much have we spent? How much have we shipped? Um, have we got, uh, have we answered all our customer messages? Have we got 100% feedback? All these metrics, all these key performance indicators allow me as the business owner to see the health of the business. Weekly reports, we get together on a one, on a weekly basis talking about um, all these key performance indicators, how we're getting on, what we're doing, where are we lacking, where do we need to have focus. Task management, you need some way that the roles and responsibilities, you need a program somewhere that you can manage everything. So you are setting up tasks for everybody. In my business, I use Asana. Um, we use Asana. Everybody has different tasks assigned. You can do multiple things like how frequent those come out. You, you can do multiple um, options on there. Uh, who's responsible? Um, have they been fed back? Is it late? There's so many things you can do. And this is just from a foundational point. Uh, team recruitment. There's a whole process on really recruiting a, a team member. You know, um, me personally, when I went into 2016, I started to recruit my first senior assistant. 
and we actually, I recruited him from, from Upwork. And there was a whole process in that on creating the job ad advertisement, uh, what skills they needed, um, the, the wording that I used. And then it went to, okay, once that job advertisement was, was posted, you know, who applied? Was there, a, is there quicker ways on how to ultimately, um, get rid of the, 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 the garbage, if you like, because you're going to have a lot of people apply and get to the people that are serious, the people that ultimately are going to help you in your business. You know, the training, once they come into your business, the training that you set up, the, uh, the ultimately, the, the categories that they're going to search for, the, um, the criteria that you're looking for, depending on how much profit you want per item, depending on how many items you want per day, depending on what time you want the report uh, submitted in your business. These are all a part of the team recruitment. And a lot of these things, yeah, people maybe don't, don't action this or don't even give it any thought. And ultimately, you need this. If you're going to have you know, a, a multi-million business, if you're going to get to you know the the the, the thirty thousand, and uh, if you're going to be able to sell you know two, three, four thousand pounds dollars per day, you need to have all this in place. Uh, appraisals. We've just done appraisals. Uh, we, in fact, we've just done the the yearly brief here at the warehouse. Our goals, and we uh, we've set up all our goals uh, for the year. And then even the company structure on where everybody sits a part of the structure. And then ultimately where the, the team fit into that is where the appraisals comes in. That's where you give them, like, this is your role right now. This is your uh, business growth project. These are the targets that you've got. This is all about appraisals. Um, growth strategy, the gr rapid growth strategy. I'm going to share with you the rapid growth strategy. A lot of the things that we've done in our operations, um, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, the master sourcing strategies, the master spreadsheets, of course, I'll going to go deeper into these this evening. And uh, from a financial taxes and capital, capital generation point of view, ultimately, this is a, I'm talking at business level here. Like one of the things that I highly recommend you guys do, and Grant, you say totally agree. Uh, Toby, totally agree. Shubu, you totally agree. You, you, I recommend that you go into this with a business mindset, like a business mindset, not not a sole trader, you know, have big ambitions. This is going to be a business that you're a director of, that you're an owner of. 